Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you today. We had a customer drop off this old school Stern Stars pinball machine. I've never had one of these, so we told him we'd work on it. We're going to fix it up for him. And it's pretty rough, but it has good bones. That's what you're looking for. Good bones. So we figured we'd... Uh, start a video before we started cleaning it up just so you can see what kind of shape it showed up in. I really like these old sterns. Um, I think I like them better than the Bally's. Now there's nothing wrong with the Bally's but they're, if you don't know the sterns were basically rip-offs of the Bally's. The, the, they used the same boards and stuff but it was like a copied design. Um, but with original art and themes and layout and stuff of course so uh, the back glass looks pretty good we've got it here in the window so you can't see too much there's a little bit of areas that are a little thin but in general it's going to be okay um, and then the the uh, play field the glass is broken on it there's filth and dirt all over it look at this I don't even know what the hell that is. I hope that's drywall. <laughs> Some bug might have done that. A gold bug. Um, that's just dirt, so that'll come off. Looks like the paint's gone, but it's not. There is some paint uh, issues around the bonus ladder there, but they're not too bad. So I think it'll clean up good. It'll just be a lot of work, but we'll get it. Um, I think the the... Lockdown bar is curved. It looks like maybe they pried it off. But that can probably be fixed. The paint is all missing off of the apron. I don't think the gentleman's too concerned about it though, so we'll probably just make it one color or something. More glass. And then uh, in the inside here, lots of dirt, mouse droppings, broken glass. But it looks pretty complete. Just looks dirty. You hear our Area 51 in the background there? So this is a pretty pretty filthy machine, but it's got good bones, so I think it'll clean up pretty good. Um, there's a key inside it that looks like it might be for the back box, so I'll get that and we'll we'll take the back glass off and see what the inside of the uh, inside of the back box looks like. Here is the back of the glass. Hmm. I'm thinking maybe somebody's worked on it not too long ago. It looks, looks to me like it's been clear coated a little bit. Can you tell? See the light hitting it? See how it's dull and then shiny? Somebody has sprayed this with clear coat. You can even see some runs. See it? I was under the impression that the guy had it for like 30 years or something. He said he got it when he was like a, a kid and that uh, they played it for like 10 years and it's been in a shed behind his house for like 20 some years. And that still might be true. But So I haven't looked in this back box yet. Let's see what we're looking at. Hopefully it's not too bad. What the hell. Damn, they're coming to repossess my truck. Got some rat nesting. But this is what you're always looking for. There's a battery on the bottom of these boards and you want to see how bad it's ate up the board. And this one, not too bad. It looks like somebody's cleaned it up in the past. So I'm gonna cut that off. Um, so that it doesn't get any worse. All right, so I cut this battery off just so it won't leak on it. It's but it looks fine, and it doesn't appear to have leaked at all. But see how the 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 board is a lighter color behind it. That looks like somebody cleaned it up a little bit before. So there was probably just some minor damage from the last time whenever they changed this battery. But I don't have any way of knowing really when they updated anything. Maybe we'll find, whenever we're working on it, we'll find some dates written on something. 
but it's been worked through at some point. Um, so, you know, you got your transformer over here and your rectifier board. Usually you don't have to replace those, although, if, again, if you look, that brown resistor looks like it's been replaced. Uh, somebody, I think, has worked through this at some point. Uh, and then you're, you go up here to your solenoid board, which is fairly simple to replace. Um, same thing. That capacitor may have been replaced. Maybe we can get a date code off that or something. The... Um, there's a date code on here that says 8002, so it would have been second week of 1980. So that's the original um, voltage regulator. And then uh, this is your lamp board down here. Original Stern lamp board looks pretty, pretty clean. And then that main board very well could be, uh, very well could be savable. Why do they have a wire there? I don't know what that goes to. Maybe it went to a. Hmm. I don't know what that would have went to. Uh, so then we've got our displays here. They look fine from the back. <laughs> Who knows? All right, so it's pretty good. I mean, it's got some trash and stuff in it. Oh, look. Somebody's worked on the harness at some point, I suppose. Yeah, so see, the, see this uh, connector? and that connector, and that connector. This one is a different t uh, type, and this cord is pretty long, so it looks like they cut the original connector off and then taped one on it that they put, took off another machine. Not sure why they'd go through all that trouble, but maybe a mouse had gotten in it, into it. Ugh. Ugh. I hope I don't catch gonorrhea from that. I think that's how you get that. Some doctor fact check me on that. Is that how you get... I think that's how you get syphilis. Anyway, okay, so we'll uh, put it back together. Now, I'm not going to work on this thing yet. Because I've got other ones that I'm working on. Um, but through the magic of YouTube, what I'll do is when I start working on this one, I will pick up right where I left off. And it will be seamless, except for this one little... Oh, wait a minute. I can show what's in the bottom, too. Let me show what's in the bottom first, and then I'll do the, <laughs> the thing. Look at this crap. What do you think? Is it even fixable? Look at this. Look at this. Blah! What the hell is that? Ugh. I think the mouse might have died right there and then vaporized. And that's, like, what's left of them. Woo! <laughs> Let the poor, uh, the poor, uh, chimes got trash stuck all under them. Good lord. What a mess. Bottom of the play field looks pretty decent, though. So, yeah, we're starting with some crap here, people, but, you know, a vacuum cleaner go a long way on this one. Make it look a lot better. And then some, uh, some, uh, Bleach. I might just pour bleach in it. But I think this thing will clean up just fine. Won't be any big deal. It's just filthy. And, you know, if it wasn't filthy, everybody would fix them. These are the, these are the type that uh, we get from zero to hero. So this is going to end up a pretty nice machine. You may not believe that right now. But if that's true, it's because you haven't watched all my other videos. So what are you waiting on? So what I was going to say a second ago was... I'm going to block this thing up, and I'm working on some other games right now, so I'm not going to work on this right now. We just got it in, though, so I wanted to document the shape that it was in when it came in, right? So, uh, for me, it'll be weeks before I work on this thing. That's why I cut the battery out so that it wouldn't sit there and rot if it was already rotting, but it looks like everything was cool. Now, for you personally, you won't have to wait weeks. I will just start filming whenever we get back into it, right? Right? And uh, through the magic of YouTube, it will just take a second. So we're stopping right now, and then we'll switch it over to the more, more current video. Okay, so we're going to get back on it. Years have passed. How many years has it been, Joey? Three. Three years since we started working on it. Or it's been three weeks, something like that. Has it been three weeks or three years? Three weeks. Oh, yeah, it's been three weeks. I got it wrong been about three weeks but we're gonna start working on it now so uh 
First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a vacuum cleaner and clean all this crap off the play field. Um, mainly just because it's dangerous. <laughs> so I'm going to clean it up a little bit and uh, throw away all the rubber rings that are just laying around all over the place and uh, get that. Look at this. They cheated. Look how they cheat. Come on now. So we'll clean that off and then I'm going to vacuum inside of it and then we'll take the... Uh, we're, uh, we're going to do it like we always do. We'll start at the power cord and follow it into the cabinet and start fixing it. We'll do the electronic stuff first, but first thing I'm going to uh, uh, get rid of all the loose particles of glass. Okay, folks, so we cleaned out the bottom with the vacuum cleaner. We cleaned all the loose glass and everything off the play field, and then we cleaned out the back box, all of the loose uh, particles, loose particles that were in the back box, and Joey wants to plug it in and see if it does anything. Now, how long did you say it was sitting in the guy's... He told me 20 years. 20 years in the guy's uh, storage shed, and nobody's plugged it up. So, as you might know, on a pinball, on a bally, there is an LED here that blinks if it's doing anything. You ready? Yep. Okay, it's locked on solid. All right, Joe, try to turn it off and back on. Okay, it's locked on solid. All right, so that means that the board is not booting, but it's at least trying. So we're getting some power over there to it. I think the 12 volts is what makes that come on. So we're getting at least 12 volts over there. So uh, we'll start working through it. Like before, we do have a few lights flickering too. Joey's very proud of that. It's coming back. It's coming back. The soul still burns, people. Look, the, uh, the general illumination lights in the back box are still doing its thing. And another little thing that's interesting is if you look, see how the displays have voltage? That means that the high voltage is on the displays. But some of them don't do that normally, so I, that doesn't necessarily mean those two aren't working. But at least three of them are getting high voltage. Okay, so we're going to do it the way we always do it. We're going to follow the power cord into the game, and uh, it goes through a couple little things in the bottom, and then it goes up here to this trans transformer on the back. Okay, so this is where the power comes when it comes in. See the cord there? And then it hooks to this uh, line filter right and then it runs over here to a power switch but look above the line filter see that smoked item that's called a varistor 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 i'm gonna get a, i'm gonna finally figure it out because we have to replace that one see how it's all burn up uh, that's used to protect the line in case there's a short on the line it'll burn that thing up before it burns up the machine so at some point something was shorted and it burnt that thing slapped the heck up so we're going to, have to put a new one on there so uh let me go. I'm going to have to order one. No, I don't have one of those. So let me go look into that. So this is all that's left of it. Eww. I knew that it was for like a line surge, and I knew that you can operate it without it, but I didn't know the whole deal. So I looked it all up. So basically, if these are rated at a certain voltage, so like this one's probably like a 130. So if the voltage on the line goes over 130, it fries this thing um, instead of frying all of your boards. Um, inside the game. So they put them on all the pinball machines just as kind of like a surge protector. If you put the game on a surge protector you don't need this and the game will work fine without it unless there's a surge it'll fry a bunch of stuff. So I ordered some and they are on the way but till then I clipped off the old one and we'll work on it and play it a little bit and everything once we get it fixed but uh, before I sell it I'll put a new one on it. Well, actually we're just fixing it for a guy. So I've clipped it off and by the way, it didn't do that when we turned it on. That's like something from before. So at some point, the um, either lightning hit the line or something happened and made that fry. Okay, so with the exception of it being blown, by the way, there's another one. <laughs> with the exception of it being blown, uh, the cord and everything looks fine. So then the power comes up here through this connector. Uh, 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 onto the rectifier board. So, uh, like we've done on a bunch of these videos, we're going to take this out next. So there's some screws around it um, to take this out of the machine. We'll take it out and put it on the bench and fix it up. Okay, folks, so you've seen us do a thousand of these. We're going to do what we always do. I cleaned it up a little bit. You could spray paint the casing and make it even better, but this mounts on the wall next to it. All right. So we're going to go in and re-solder all of these connectors 
If any of them are really burnt up where they look like they've got trouble, we're going to replace them with new ones. And then we're going to check all the fuses to make sure they're the right value and that none of them have blown. Remember, we turned it on, so if there was a problem here, it would blow one of them. Uh, and then we're going to check the three bridge rectifiers, but pretty much if one of those are a problem, one of your fuses will be blown if it's the right value fuse. Um, but everything actually looks pretty clean on it. You may say, clean? Come on. Well, for its age, yeah, it's pretty clean. Um, so I'll see if we run into anything. But yeah, see the varistor there? They have one built into the rectifier board as well. I don't know what voltage that would would be, but apparently the way they work is like I ordered a 130 volt for that machine because our line voltage here is a little over 120. So if there's a voltage spike, it'll get up over 130 and it'll burn up the varistor instead of burning up everything that's connected to the uh, to the AC. But uh, I'll take this apart and get to the back and solder these, and if I run into anything, I will let you know. But it looks like, I don't think there's going to be any problems, except I'll bet some of the fuses are the wrong value. Okay, people. Humanity has came through once more. All of the fuses were the correct values. Every single one of them. Whoever worked on this before did it just the way it was supposed to be done. All the fuses are the correct ones. All you people that thought that there would be a 20 where there's supposed to be a 4. And that there would be a 5 where there's supposed to be a 1. All of you people who thought that, you were all wrong. You should have betted on humanity doing the right thing. Never discount humans for being great. The guy that put in these fuses was great. Okay, so that's fine. The bridge rectifiers, I tested them anyway just to make sure that uh, they weren't open. Because if they're short, they'd blow the fuse, but if they're open, they wouldn't do anything. Um, so that's that. Everything appears cool. So we're going to put it back in the machine and check the voltages. Now, people, I have done all of this on these like 50 times. So I'm not filming every little part of it. This isn't really an instructional video. Um, but if you go back and watch some of our other ones that we've done on Stern or Bally pinball machines, they all have the same unit in it. They all have the same solenoid board in it. So if I do, if I'm not comprehensive this time where I don't mention a certain thing, if you go back and watch one of the other videos, we probably covered it in that one. So if you're looking at it for instructions on how to do it, go check that. But what I, the way I kind of see it is this is the Stern stars story. You know what I mean? So we're, this is what we did first trying to fix it. And uh, there's really nothing here that's messed up. I resoldered all the connectors, cleaned them. So there's not really all that much to show you. You know what I mean? So, uh, But if I run into something, like the varistor, for instance. And I'm going to just keep calling it a varistor or a, a varistor. You know, it is what it is, people. <laughs> the varistor. Whenever, uh, whenever we found that blew up, blown up in the machine... Well, we haven't had that problem on other ones. I've seen it before on games, but none that I've that I've filmed that I that I remember. Um, so you know that was an opportunity for us to look into that and talk about that a little bit. But uh, sometimes stuff like this, there's nothing really wrong with it, so there's nothing really to talk about. So I cleaned it up, cleaned all the fuses, squeezed the little fuse holders back together a little bit, cleaned the the pins on the connectors, resoldered all of them, so in case they had any cold solder joints, which they did on a couple. And then tested the three uh, bridge rectifiers, and everything's cool. This this thing's actually in pretty good shape. It's just ugly. So I'm going to go pop it back in, and uh, we'll plug in just the connector that brings the power up here to this, and then we'll test uh, our voltages um, to see if it's putting out the proper ones. All right, folks, let's go see about this mess. We are going to check our voltages. Voltages. So our first voltage is, I'll let you know if I think it's correct. Test point one. Well, that ain't correct. Test point two, 190 volts. That's for the displays. So on that one, you will get numbers all over the place. Sometimes it'll say 160, sometimes it'll say 240. So basically... It just comes right off the, the transformer, and then I think there's a bridge rectifier or something that makes it happen, but you're going to get stuff all over the place. So basically, if you've got a pretty good voltage there, anywhere near 200 volts, <laughs> it's probably fine. You won't know until it gets uh, uh, 
regulated on the, on the next board. Test point three. That's your 12 volts. So the 12 volts is used to make the 5 volts. And you might say, well, why would they do that? Why not just make a 5 volt? Well, they use the 12 volts for stuff, too. Um, that's, what, like, for instance, what makes that LED come on. But the 12 volts is later turned into 5 volts, which runs all of the integrated circuits. Test point four. Nothing. Test point five. 46 volts. So that is your, D these are all DC so far. The 46 is your uh, solenoid voltage. So that's pretty good. So now we're going to put it on AC. Test point four is 7.46. That's the voltage used, I believe, for the uh, general illumination. Right. And then let's test, test point one again. We didn't get anything on it. Hmm, that's not good. So apparently I missed one of the voltages, people. Test point one is not working right. And I think it was because that's the one that does the, uh, I think that's the one that does the controlled lamps that were, you remember there were a few on the play field that were coming on? But I'm getting no reading on that now, so we're going to have to look at that. What, what does test point one do? Here are the schematics right out of the bottom of it. So test point one should be 5.4 volts DC. And this, it runs through this bridge rectifier here. Right? Bridge three, bridge one. This is bridge two, although it's not labeled. Um, so it runs through this bridge rectifier. It should make 5.4 volts DC. So it was not. So I took my multimeter and I checked on the fuse. And we had voltage on both sides of the fuse, the 7.8 volts there, but we didn't have voltage on the actual bridge rectifier, which a lot of times can mean the fuse holder. So I took the fuse back out, cleaned the fuse holder, and then put a brand new fuse in it, and that got us our voltage back. So I'll show you that. Okay, back on test point one. 6.29 volts, which is higher than 5.4 because it's all unregulated. But we got all of our voltages there, so you know what that means? It means we're about ready to move up to the solenoid board, but first we have to look at the connectors on the, on the board that are all screwed up. So here are these connectors that plug into the thing. Um, you can see that they get all burned up. See how that one's just like... Ugh. Mainly it's on the pins that carry AC voltage, but the um, some of them get really dirty too, so sometimes you, you you know it's better off to just replace all of them. So we're going to go through and replace them. I'm going to put a new connector on this since it's actually charred. Usually this one's burnt up too, right here in the middle. But this particular one just got a little bit yellow, didn't burn up. So I'm going to slowly replace them. So the way I do that... It's with these little connectors. You can get these two that are Trifuricon, where they grab all three sides of the post. Those are pretty good, too. Um, and then our handy little set of ratcheting crimpers. Perfect crimp every time, people. And then I always use a separate one to actually strip the things. They make some of these that do it all in one, but... And then sometimes I need this if I'm cutting something. I like these too. So these are my tools that I use. And then if I'm sliding a pin out of the connector, I usually use one of these to push the little the little bar down and slide it out. There's a little pin. You look very carefully. There's a little pin that holds it in place. So you can bend that down and it'll slide out slid out of this one because the whole thing's melted. So uh, I'm going to replace those so that we can basically be done with this um, transformer here and move on up to the next place that the power goes to which is the solenoid board. So let me start replacing those and if I run into anything cool I'll show you. So here's what's left of all the connectors. Look at it. Bleh. Ugh, look, those are original, 1978 or so. Look at them. Ugh. Actually, they didn't look that bad, but I figured, hey, ain't no half stepping. 
that's for our buddy Melanated Pros uh, or that, <laughs> that uh, comments down below. I know he knows what I'm talking about. Ain't no half-stepping. Some of y'all don't like uh, the good music. Matt, do you know what I'm talking about when I say ain't no half-stepping? I assume you're talking about stepper motors, so no. No, see, he thinks I'm talking about a stepper motor. Ain't no half-stepping. You don't know what that is? No. Google it. Are you on the internet? Sure. Okay, type ain't no half-stepping and tell me what it says. I'm going to educate you people right in the middle of this video. No. Now, I'm pretty white. Uh, all right, I get Big Daddy Kane. Big Daddy Kane ain't no half-stepping. You're damn right. Now, everybody should listen to that video. 1988 hip-hop. 1988 hip-hop. That's right. Did it, did it hit number one? Uh, number 53. Yeah, but that's on the pop charts, on the rap charts, man. Come on, on the hip hop charts. I'm reading the top results. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so what I'm saying is, people, don't halfway do it. Of course, I I halfway do it all the time, though. Yeah, you know, really. But really tonight I didn't feel like halfway doing it, so I replaced all of them. Okay, and when I did, it added the lights back to the play field. Now, remember earlier, whenever we turned it on, we didn't have those, remember? Remember I was telling you, oh, look, the lights are still on the general illumination on the back box, but they were not on the play field. That was because that one wire was burned up out of the connector that we were showing earlier. Okay, so we checked all our voltages. We got all them. We got all of our connectors fixed. The game is still doing the, the light locked on. So our next thing to mess with is this solenoid board. So I'm going to pull it out. And we're going to go over it and get it all the way live. Hey, Google all the way live. All right. <laughs> all the way live. All right. I don't think I got what you wanted. Oh, okay. I got custom sports apparel. No, 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 no. Song. All the way live. Uh, Journey? No. Okay. Not Journey. Does that sound like Journey? There's a song by Journey called All the Way, and there's a live performance of it. No. Type, it's all the way live. All right. This one's going to be the best part of the video. All right, I got a 1978 song. Let's see. It is Lakeside Shot. Huh? Late side shot. Shot? Yeah. That's not it? I think that's it. Yeah. Artist late side? Lake side, there you go. Yeah. I think that's it. Oh, no. Lake side, the album was Shot of Love. There you go. Shot of what? Shot of Love. Shot of Love by Lakeside. It's all the way live. <laughs> Okay, people, so enough of that. Whenever I took this out, it's all, these pins are filthy. Right? So the way it works is the 12 volts that we measured on the power supply that we know is good, right? It comes up to here through one of these pins, and this test point measures the 12 volts, or, you know, it's connected to the 12 volts. And then it goes to this regulator, and this regulator turns it into 5 volts. Right, and uh, that's what all the chips on all the boards need. So, if you have a bad connection on these pins, or if the pins in the little connectors that we just replaced on the rectifier board, if the pins on this connector are, uh, you know, subpar, you're gonna run into the same problem where it, uh, it, uh doesn't, you know, there's resistance, so the, the voltage doesn't get through that it needs. So if it's not getting 12 volts, it can't properly make 5 volts, or if it is getting 12 volts, the 5 volts might not be getting out of here and going over to the MPU, so. Now it does look like somebody has replaced this capacitor, so that's good. You don't have to replace this every time. I've seen some people mistake that. They think that, oh, this thing goes bad all the time. No, it doesn't go bad all the time. It's just it goes bad if it's the original one that's 40 years old. Sometimes you can see a, uh, a date code or something. Let me see if I can spin it around. Let me try to spin it around and we'll see if there's a date code on it. 
All right, there's no date code on it, and it, it's also, it's a 10,000 microfarad. Um, so it's a little, it's a little undersized, too. I, don't, I think the original one was a 12, I believe. Let's look in the, in the schematics. Okay, I have the schematics, and the original one was 11,700 microfarad. So, uh, it's a little undersized from, you know, it'd probably work fine like this. But I always put them in a little bigger. So we're going to go up a little bigger, I think. This one's probably been replaced at some point. That doesn't look like the original one to me. It looks too clean. So my whole point is, usually you, if it's been replaced, you don't have to replace it again. It's just if it's 40 years old, you know, it's getting old. Um, so we'll replace that. And we're going to clean all these connectors. We're going to re-solder the pins on the back. I'm going to check all of these transistors to see if they seem like they're all right. Then we're looking pretty good. Let's see what the back looks like. We got a little jumper wire here. So there's a trace that had burnt up. So this is where the trace is going. Boy, it had some issues. Uh, uh, uh. Which one is that? Let's see. It's the fourth one. Q4. I had to sneeze. I hit the sneeze button. Q4. We're going to find it. Oh, look at this. This is a strange one. It was the out hole coil. So at some point on some game, now this is a Bally board, so this was out of, <coughs> excuse me, this was out of a different game, obviously, and this is a Stern that we're working on, but they're interchangeable. But at some point, whatever game it was in, the out hole um, transistor burn up and has been replaced, and when it burn up, it burn up the, the line on it, and I had to put a jumper wire on it to replace the trace. That's fine. Uh, so I'll check all these to make sure that's cool. We'll re-solder all these. Um, we're going to do a couple little mods like we usually do. If you've uh, seen our other videos, you've seen us do that. And then we're going to put it back in and check it out. I'm going to clean it, clean it off a little bit. You know, you don't want you don't want cobwebs in there if you can help it. Ain't no half stepping around here. Okay. Let me see what I can find. Okay, so we did the typical stuff. We took off that one undersized one, and we put a 15,000 microfarad one in. Um, and uh, I tested all these transistors. They all test fine. So I guess we'll see. All of our solenoids should be working. Cleaned up all the pins on everything. The jumper was fine. Resoldered all the connectors. So we get a nice solid, solid connection. Uh, I did the little mod where you, the ground on that filter capacitor, it's only got this one trace. So normally it connects to this, which comes over to here, and then goes out this one pin and grounds back on the rectifier board. So what I did was I connected it to the grounds on the the rest of the grounds on the board too. So it's got a little more solid ground. What do you think about that? And then I also connected two of the test points together. So this is the 5 volt as it leaves the board. Now the way they do it is they send it out on one of these wires and it comes back in on the 25th pin to run the chips on the board. So there's just a little jumper wire. Well, it's a little, you know, it's unnecessary. So I just short it on the actual board so that the 5 volts that the board is making runs right down and powers the, the chips. So if you... Uh, pin 25, see this little jumper? All right. So the, the voltage regulator makes the 5 volts. It goes off the board and then right back on the board 
so that it can run the, the uh, chips on the board. So we have basically tied this to this. So now the jumper is on the board. So why I go through all that trouble? Well, it just takes a second, and that way, if that's a bad connection there or a bad connection there, you don't lose your 5 volts on the solenoid chips, which may make a solenoid not work, or may make a solenoid lock on, which would be worse. I don't know. It might make it lock on. But anyway, so we do that, and uh, we did the thing on that, and that's about all that you would really need to do to it. Everything tested fine. I think I honestly think that the, the bad connections on these, this is for the uh, solenoid driver pins, so this is what turns on and off um, specific solenoids. It's with the signals that come on this connector. But I, I think the 12 volt coming in up here and then the 5 volt going back out that runs the MPU, I think that was probably screwed up because of the just the corrosion and yuckiness on the connector. I'm going to go look at the pins in the game. I might have to replace all of them too. Oh, I hate doing that. Ah. But we're going to go try it. So we're going to go plug this board back in and we're going to measure our 12 volts on the board. And then we're going to measure the 5 volts after the regulator makes it on that uh, uh, test point there. And uh, that'll at least get us where the, our two power supply boards, the rectifier board and the solenoid driver board, are ready to go. So we, now we finally know that the power supply is working right. All right, folks, we have mounted it back in. We've got our new capacitor. Okay, now... This, remember, somebody has worked on this thing, and this board looks pretty good. I remember I tore the battery off of it before we put it in storage, but it's not that bad off. Except for the, look at the, wow, we, when we do the video on that one, we'll have to check that out. That's pretty cool. Um, we'll do a video on the MPU repair uh, next time. But my whole point is, that thing looks pretty good. It might still work. I don't know. Maybe. So, uh, theory being, the voltage might have been low coming out of this thing because of that ugly connector there that we've got plugged in now. So if it does, watch this LED, see if she's still locked on. If it, if it does work, it's supposed to be like a quick flash and then seven, seven lights. Oh, quick flash, one, two, three, four, five, six. Wow. She's trying to work. Fantastic. Look at that. I didn't hear any coils, any chimes or anything. So the, the, uh, the, Lines that come over here to tell the solenoids to work, which is how the chimes would have worked, all come off this connector here. And then the displays all come off this connector up here, and you see the displays are kind of working. And kind of not. So she's getting there. Hmm, great. So in other words, this MPU is working, but it needs service. So we'll do a video on that. But it looks like we've got our power supply doing what it's supposed to do. So we fixed the... Fix the rectifier board and the transformer and we fixed the solenoid board so you know now we know all of that's good so now we can move over here and work on the uh, the MPU so we're working through it as the power flows through it people that's the best way to do it I keep telling you that don't y'all know that by now all right so we appreciate everybody hanging out with us hope you enjoyed the video we'll stop here because it's getting long give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you and uh, leave your comments down below. Let us know what you think. Boy, I'm excited about this one. This is going to be a fun game, I think. It's going to be cool when it does what it's supposed to do. Look at that. Pretty sweet. It's trying to start. I would try to start it, man, but I don't want it. It's, it's play field that has glass and crap all over it. I don't want anything moving on it. Uh, but leave your comments below. We'd like to thank everybody, too, that has been using our Amazon links. If you don't know about that, down below we have links to Amazon. If you click those and then go buy anything on Amazon, not what we put down there, but anything at all, after you click that link, it gives us a little piece of what you bought. Somebody on there earlier bought a uh, 
I don't remember what, something like, a, it was like $200. Oh, it was an Epson printer. So whoever bought the Epson printer, we appreciate that. That was nice of you. And, you know, we did the international links. And at last talk, I was mentioning that people in Canada were buying more stuff than anybody in the world. Well, that has changed. Here comes the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom is now buying more stuff than anybody in the world besides Americans. Which makes sense because, you know, we're in USA, the USA, so we got more people from the USA watching. But out of the international people, uh, the United Kingdom has overtaken Dear Canada. Sorry about that, Canada. <laughs> but we appreciate people from everywhere that have been doing that. Thank you very much. And finally, finally, if you haven't been watching My Brother Donnie and the, the uh, saga of the grocery store, that we bought in downtown Jefferson. It's a little tiny one, though. It's not a big one. We're not made of money, people. If you haven't watched this, the the saga of the the grocery store that we <laughs> that we have bought in downtown Jefferson that we are fixing up, you've been missing out. Donnie's been spraying paint everywhere, building walls out of cinder blocks, doing electrical work, doing plumbing. Uh, it's been a big mess. Up on the roof. <laughs> So if you're interested in any of that, it has nothing to do with uh, arcade games or pinball machines, but it really is my brother, Donnie, and I'm usually on some of the videos, and we've been working on this old grocery store that we bought. Little tiny one. Some some people have said it's more like a quickie mart, but it's too big to be a quickie mart. It, re it really was a grocery store. That's what it was. So uh, go check that out if you want. It's um, the, His channel is called My Brother Donnie. So I'll see you over there. Make sure to leave your comments below again and give us a thumbs up. Remember, people, always give us an odd number of thumbs up. Never click it an even number. Always an odd number. Right? <laughs> so we'll see you on the next video where we'll work on this MPU a little bit and see if we can get it working even better. So uh, take care.